I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and as I say, thanks for joining us. So I appreciate it. Last time we got to meet Garrett Schooley, and we thought his story was so interesting as it related to his wife that we've in, we're going to interview Michelle Schooley. And so, Michelle, thank you for coming from California to, to share your story. Thank you for having me. Now, what's interesting is Michelle was never Mormon. So this is actually, other than interviewing a few former or people that were never Mormon that kind of actively are involved in the ministry to Mormons. This is the first time we've actually interviewed someone who is just a, just a Christian. So anyway, okay. but it relates. So I think there's some interesting points here. And so be interesting to hear your story and how it relates to Garrett's and everything. Okay. So where were you born? Um, I was born in Los Angeles, oh. but like my husband um, was raised in the Central Coast and okay. um, grew up with him. We went from, to high school together. We went to high school together. We went to junior high together. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes, so we um <laughs> we were very much part of each other's lives in that way as friends. Um yeah. all through and, those and years. You were not Mormon. And, I was not and Mormon. Never been Mormon. No. Um what religion was your family? We were Christian. Okay. My parents were born again. Okay. And um yeah, they were born again. I was Not raised in the church, and so I gave my life to the Lord when I was 11 years old. Now, what does that mean for um, those that don't maybe know that? That means understanding who Christ really is for you and understanding that relationship with Jesus. Um, I think when I was around 11 years old, I had gone through the prayer, like accepting the Lord into my heart, but yeah. around 11, I really understood what Christ did for me. And wow. I just um, was reading the Bible at those young ages and just soaking it up. I mean, I remember being baptized, being filled with the Holy Spirit and just, at just age 11. Well, at age 11 and 12 and yeah, just loving Jesus, just loving Jesus. And um, yeah. So I always ask about grace, but you understood grace then as an 11 year, 12 year old. I did. I did. I understood what God had done by sending His Son. I now, understood that. You knew Mormons get baptized at age eight. Um, you, did know, you know, you know that? I didn't know a lot about the Mormons oh. until I married my husband. Oh, I was going to ask if you'd yeah. run into other um, Mormons over the years. The Mormons were such a small church. Like my husband went over, they were a small church in Morro Bay. So the ratio of Mormons in our school was... Really? Gosh, in our grade alone, I think there was maybe 20. There wasn't a whole lot of Mormons. Okay. And so it was like, oh, you're Mormon? Oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Like you didn't, it didn't, I don't it know. You just kind of assumed they were Christian. It and kind were... of, and just, um, yeah. I always knew when I was young, though, that it wasn't being a Christian. I did oh. know that there was a difference there. Okay. I just didn't know what the difference was. Okay. And never... And you your know. parents, did you did they ever mention Mormons or talk no, about it? No, it okay. wasn't, you know, it wasn't a thing. So really. you didn't know about the age eight thing? No. And the mm -mm. funny thing, that, and the reason I bring it up too kind of is that age eight, we baptize, or we, as a former Mormon, but we baptize age eight to, to have them become members of the church. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what you tell your grandkids and your children. Oh, you're going to get baptized. Are you going to get baptized and become a member of the church? You know, it's never about accepting Jesus. Mm, okay. No, it's just becoming a member. And then you get the gift of the Holy Ghost is what they promise. In the, okay. You get blessed after you're baptized. But I always thought that was funny. Even as a good active Mormon, I kept thinking, that's just so strange that, that 
it wasn't necessarily about the church. It wasn't really about Jesus then even that I was thinking. It was more about why do we have kids do this at age eight when mm -hmm. they really don't know anything? And they see, really aren't making a good decision on their own. I grew up understanding that if you wanted to be baptized, it was your way of making a declaration that you know Christ. Yeah. But you get to just express that I love Jesus and that's why I'm being baptized. Not, oh, you know, so that's, I mean, maybe that's the difference there. Yeah. Um, so throughout the years, though, as I was getting older and older, um, I started to fall away from the Lord, mm. you know, as high school years came. Kind and, of quit going to church? You mean, um, yeah, my parents, um, we had a hard time with the church that we were going to, and so they stopped going. Oh. And um, that kind of, it's just a trickle-down effect, I guess, you know, I, I stopped going. Um, now, did you have youth camps at all or Bible They were seminars? there, but I didn't go. You didn't go? Okay. Yeah. And it just, it was, it was okay with me because I was good with God. And yeah. I had that strong. And that confidence. I had right? that confidence. Yeah. That's a very good word to say. Yeah. I was confident. I was good with God. And I, I have Jesus. I'm good with God. Well, as I was getting older and older, now 18 and now 19, and I'm in college and, um, I started to do a lot of drugs and oh <laughs> I was, you know, doing, I smoked a lot of pot. I'll in, just say in, it. <laughs> in, in the world. As I was say. in the world. Yes. I was <laughs> very Garrett, much in the world. That's what Garrett said. That's what he said. <laughs> and he's, he's, he's better with that. Um, <laughs> but it was okay because I was good with God. And I had that attitude. And I think a lot of Christians kind of go down that road like, oh, I'm have saved. To, I'm this. Yeah. And or... you have, you forget that if you're not in the word and you're not um, constantly working on your relationship with Christ, which the Lord wants, you, you don't know that you're losing your relationship with Christ. And that's, I think that's yeah. the whole idea of backsliding. Doesn't the world just pull us? It just sucks you right yeah, in I mean, and you don't see it. And it happens right. so slowly and yeah. so gradually. Um, but to bring my story around to my husband, um, it, it was very much in the world and I was in and college. How old were you at this point? Um, gosh, I was 21, two, right and, around there. And he had now broken up with his... He had broken up. I had seen him before he went on his and mission. you must have known her too, right? I did. I did. Okay. She went to our high school. I knew sure, her. I yeah. knew all that. Um... And you knew he'd gone out on his mission and come home Yes, and... I did, because we had kept in touch over the years. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd write letters or whatever, and he'd write a letter back, and it was a lot of fun like that. And it That's was just, neat. we had a very good friendship. Yeah. You know, Garrett and I always had a good friendship. And so... What would your parents think of him? Oh, uh, my mom always just loved Garrett. The fact that he was Mormon really wasn't a... It wasn't... Too much. A thing. And, you know, I think... The power of prayer is amazing because when I've been a kid, since a kid, my mom has always prayed, Lord, I want her to marry a godly man. Whoever that is, really? I want her to marry a godly man. And she would pray over that man. Yeah. And she'd be like, and I want that man to just love you and love you. And whoever he is, I want her to marry a godly man. Wow. And I look back now and I just think that Garrett was always covered in prayer you know, like <laughs> he never had a he chance. He didn't even know, <laughs> you know, and he was just covered in prayer because my mom just well, she was sweet. faithful in that prayer. Yeah. And and do you have brothers and sisters? I, I do. Ask you that. I but, do. Yeah. I have two brothers, two brothers. and neither of them it's, are following the Lord right uh, now. Yeah. But you were the little special daughter, I guess. And yeah, so I am the oldest of the two of oh, the three. Right. Yeah. The three. Okay. Yeah. So how old were you then when you you were twenty one, twenty two, when Garrett came back into? Yeah. When I, you met him out front of the... What we ran doing? into each yeah, other. What were, you, what were you just happened to be there? It was or so random. It was so random. It was very, it was weird. It was like, I came down these steps and he walks out this door and I'm like, oh my goodness, hi. And he's, it was just very, um, it was, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It was like a moment in a movie, yeah. you know, where <laughs> you're just like, oh my goodness. And we just got to and talking. And go out that night. And we and go everything. out and we really became inseparable after that, you know, yeah. just very much best friends. Yeah. And, you know, 
and then, like he said, we moved to Chico, like all, we moved to Chico and we moved back. He started working for my dad. We got married. It now, just always seemed like it meant, was meant to be. Yeah, was he going, he didn't go to church at all at this point? Did, um, once we started dating, he never went to the Mormon, Mormon church, church, but he always talked about it and it what was always say? there. What did he say? He'd just be like, oh, well, you know, my family's Mormon and, you know, like one day we'll have to, you know, think it, like just vague things, just like, and I always was just looked at him like. Was he teach you anything? No, he, it was always just like, you just don't understand yet. <laughs> you just, you just, you, well, you just don't understand yet. And I was always like. I'm never going to understand that. Like, I, and things that he would say about Joseph Smith would just like poof, blow he, my mind. Like, But he what? certainly believed it. Um, yes, oh, most definitely. Yeah. In the temple, I'm sure. Oh, that, definitely. That he wanted to probably get yeah. you eventually into the temple. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, it was, it was in his heart. Like he just thought that was the truth. That is the truth. And <laughs> because I knew Jesus and had given my life to him, I knew what the truth was in my heart, you know? And so it was very, um, and that it was very conflicting in our marriage in the first couple years of our marriage. And as wow. we started talking about having kids, it was like really hard because he would look at me and be like, you're not a Christian. Like you, the way that you follow the Lord and you say you love the Lord, but you're not acting out. He said this to you. Yeah, right? the way that you should. And my church like would be a great way for us to get back into knowing God and loving it. And he just wanted us to go to the church to find that routine, to find that to find God really yeah. in our marriage. Right. And I would just look at him like, You're out to lunch. Like that's not happening. I don't <laughs> even know. Like, uh and and like I said, the power of prayer. And I remember we would butt heads over this and then the conversation would die. We wouldn't talk about things like that for like a month or two. And then it would come up again and then we wouldn't talk about it. And then I remember one time just looking at him in just this very like, okay, you believe in God? And he'd be like, yeah. And I'm like, I believe in God. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, then we need to give it to God. And he just looked at me. I'm like, well, let's just pray. And he just looked at me, and this was like the first time we prayed ever really? together. And we just said, and he's just looking at me like going through the motions. He was absolutely just going through the motions for me. Okay. And he just said, okay. And I said, okay, God, we both believe in you. What are we supposed to do? Oh my How God. do you make this work? That's what is supposed to happen? Such faith. And little did we know what God was about to do. <laughs> And I just, he rocked our world. Yeah. And that's like, um, my husband started listening to talk radio. He started like digging at the Mormon church and pulling things up trying and to learn about the church. trying to figure out and more on a mission to prove to me that, that church, this was the way, right. that this was the way for us to follow. Like if I can just prove to you that the church is the truth, You'll fall. You'll come with me to the church, did and we'll ever, be perfect. Did he ever present you like with the Book of Mormon to actually ask you to read it or anything? Um, no, but his mother did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got a Book of Mormon for Christmas, and she presented it to me, with and I'm just just putting it out there. Yeah. You know, here you go. Every good house should have a Book of Mormon. <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, and I was put it on the shelf, you know. So we we had all the Book of Mormon. We had all the material in the house. Um, I just remember him on the computer, though, researching and looking and and just like, Michelle, did you did you know this about Joseph Smith? And I'm looking at him like, I didn't know anything about Joseph Smith. Good or bad. Yeah. And he's just like, well, oh, my goodness. And he would just just spill all this stuff. And like, I didn't know this. And like, what I could just I call the bad news. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just things that were just. For whatever reason, were shocking to him. Well, yeah, yeah, because you it have, was, have this blind faith that we have in Joseph Smith and the prophets and the church and the Book of Mormon and so on. And yeah, he started uncovering. He started uncovering it. Yeah. And as he's uncovering it and he's listening to um, talk radio and different people speaking about Jesus and he's starting to read the scripture. And I, I got to watch the Lord change a man <laughs> right in front of my eyes. That's amazing. And I look back and it was one of the most amazing things that you would ever see is to see somebody just fall in love with Jesus. Like 
he did. And was it scary for you? It was very scary for me. Absolutely. But he fell in love with God. And I remember when he came home one day and said, I, I gave my life to the Lord. And I go, really? And he goes, yeah, behind a dumpster. <laughs> and I'm like, behind a dumpster? Like, I just cracked up. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I was just blowing and with that, with, you know, because he's at work and he was mm. landscaper and he's just blowing the leaves and he's just like, I was just blowing and I, I just did it. And I'm like, okay. Well, somebody came on the, he was listening to and Yeah, and he got the opportunity to, yeah. and he's just like, okay. And I'm like, okay. What and then it? I'm just like, God, what does this mean? Like, what is happening in my world? What is happening to my husband? And I got to watch him grow with the Lord. It was, it was really it's, it's amazing when I look back and see that. How long had you gone between the time you started going and then these experiences with him and him studying? Was this like a few years or a lot of years? Um, I think it was a few years, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he gave his life to the Lord in um, 2006. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 2006. 2006. And it was when you give your life to the Lord and then you start growing and then it's like baby steps, you know? I know that and feeling then exactly. I was watching his baby steps and baby steps and I got pregnant. And so then um, we had our son in 2008. Yeah. And um, as my husband was just getting on fire for the Lord, I was getting into this place of like, uh-oh, <laughs> like, I'm, I've always just been good with God. I mean, I was literally like, peace, Lord, we're good. <laughs> like, that's it, you yeah. know? And I just started, um, like, it's hard to say, but I came, became jealous of his relationship with Christ. Because it seemed so Because on it fire. was so on fire yeah. and so amazing. And I had experienced that as a kid. Yeah. And so what I could see, I was remembering like myself and him, like seeing that fire. And I was just like, I was, I was jealous. I was like, Lord, that's honest. why don't, why don't I have that? Yeah. What's wrong with me? Like what happened? And my husband little, I know now, but during that time was praying for me every day. I want her to yeah. love the Lord as much as I do. What do we do, God? How are we at? You know, and he would always just pray for me. He told me this later. And <laughs> How sweet. Was he going to church too? He yeah. was. He was going to Calvary, a Calvary Chapel, a and <laughs> I would drag my feet. I wouldn't go in the building. I'd be like, I'm good. I can hear the sermon out here. I'd sit on the lawn in front, <laughs> and I wouldn't meet anybody. And I remember just like, oh, absolutely dragging my feet. Like, I'm not ready to commit going back to church and doing this. Like, I'm, you know. And it was one afternoon, he came home from work at lunch break, and I was just crying and crying, and I was broken. And so many things were coming crashing down in our lives, and, and I felt so responsible in so many different ways. And I was broken. I was listening to a song, and the song was saying, when the waves come crashing down, will you let me drown? Will you? And I just kept thinking that over and over in my head. And I kept going, will you let me drown? <laughs> and then I just said, God, I'm ready. This is it. I'm done. I'm done with living a life that is not of you. I'm done with um, just, I'm done with saying I'm peace. I'm good with you, God. I want to be in relationship with you. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And he broke me. And my husband <laughs> came home at lunch and I just scared it. I just, I, I'm rededicating my life to the Lord. I don't know what that looks like. I don't even know how, what that means, but I think it's time. He, and we cried and we prayed and he was like, I, I, he was just like ecstatic in his head. I know it. And we went to church together and the sermon that the pastor spoke, spoke, you know how those sermons are sometimes. Right to you. <laughs> oh, he, they go verse by verse teaching. And when they're reading the Bible and it's just those verses that get you. Yeah. And it was, um, he just said, you know, often we can be a Christian and we can be following the Lord and think we're living a life for the Lord. But are you really? Are you really living a life for the Lord? And maybe there's somebody here who just needs to just reach out to God and understand what it really means to live a life for the Lord yeah. and really read the Bible and really get in that. And I was just like, 
oh god <laughs> like Another you're message. Hit, oh you're hitting me home and that was it for me that uh -huh. was it for me praise god yeah and you know and what god has done in our lives yeah since we've rededicated now we have three amazing children yeah you have three kids we we are um we head up the children's ministry at our church which I crack up. I have such a heart for kids. And it, I, I kind of elbowed my husband. I go, you want to do the children's ministry? And he says, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, I know, utter chaos, right? Yeah. And he's just like, oh, well, and we prayed about it. And we prayed about it. And he goes, you know what? I do. I do. And to see him now. With that, those kids oh, and stuff. It's so, it's so neat because he just truly is all about the foundation. Yeah. He's all about that. And it's just so, and it's so neat. The foundation he can give them. Yeah, we the wanted... foundation that he didn't get yes. in a lot of ways. Right. You know, and he's just all about, we got to show them Jesus. You just don't we got to show them Jesus. Mormonism. Yeah, who Jesus is. Well, there's two things I wanted to mention. One is that that's one of the things that Im impacted me to realize that Christians actually love their families and stuff. Mm -hmm. In Mormonism, we think we have a corner on family. And, and when I found out Christians actually have youth programs, youth camps and Bible oh, studies, yeah. and they have children's ministry and te yep. teaching their children. It just, all, I mean, I know that's naive, but it was just like, wow, why would I think that they wouldn't have wonderful families and that they wouldn't have programs for their kids? I know. I know. And the second thing I wanted to just touch on while I'm thinking about it is you you know that a lot of Mormons, when they come out of Mormonism, they actually become agnostic or atheist. I know. I know. That breaks and my I, heart. It does mine, too. And I think part of the problem is they don't have that 11-year-old experience you had of coming to Jesus. They don't know. They don't bring mm -hmm. Jesus with them. You know, we say it here, a Methodist could become an Episcopal or a Lutheran or a Presbyterian mm -hmm. or something, but they take Jesus with them. They take Jesus Mormons with them. Mormons don't really have Jesus Mm -hmm. For some reason, I mean, I think it's the doctrine and the way it's talked about in the real religion. Have you noticed that too? I mean, oh, absolutely, I've, absolutely. Yeah. When um, Mormons come out of yeah, when they come out and they they just turn away from God. A lot of times they really do, and that breaks my heart. Yeah. Um, only because watching my husband turn to the Lord, well, it's know. almost like a Mormon coming out and choosing Christ in that way has got more fire yeah. inside. Like, I, I, I can't explain it, but to know, to be raised in such doctrine and yeah. to be raised in kind of a very strict religious way right. and then to really find Christ, the fire that burns so bright is out of control. And it overflows. I mean, it is so beautiful to see. I mean, my husband lights up a room when he talks about Jesus. Yeah, I mean, I, I he can tell. just is on fire well, for the Lord. Well, Jesus we just don't know. Yeah. And, and we don't appreciate. He's our older brother. He just happened to be there first. Mm -hmm. He had to come to the earth to get a body mm -hmm. and uh, to be baptized. He had to go through all the steps. And he's just on the prog he's just progressing like the rest of us, and we don't need him except at the very you know, we're we're working hard and he picks up the difference. We don't realize, and now as Christians, of course, we realize that he's done it all, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that he's actually God, mm -hmm. and that uh, we. And it's a completely that. different Jesus. It is a different Jesus. Yeah. And they don't know that. They Jesus. don't know that. Yeah. And it's it's hard to explain. Well, so tell us just a little bit about uh, your family. Did they uh, they're mm. pretty happy about everything, I guess, or mom's prayer has been answered? Yeah, yeah. Um, what's amazing, and this is why I say that my husband has such an amazing fire inside for the Lord, because that fire burned so bright. It broke me, and I came back to the Lord. And then me and my husband started attending church, and um, I think wasn't so many years later, like within two years later, it broke my mom because she was like, she realized 
I'm away from the church. I'm not following God the way I can. Really? And um, <laughs> she started just like, you know what? I'm going back to church. Garrett, Michelle, our church, I'm going back to church. And I'm going to say, it broke my mom. She is on fire for the <laughs> Lord in such a beautiful way. My dad, it has just recently broke my dad, and he is on fire for the Lord. Like, oh, it's, it's just this little, like, avalanche that's just growing and we just say okay who's next god <laughs> who's next you know what who how many we we pray every day for everybody in our family i yeah. pray for my brothers we pray for garrett's brothers and his sister and um his dad his dad has been watching like sees what is garrett doing well what is he how has he found jesus well what's that light burning so bright inside of him because i tell you what god is contagious yeah. he really is and um, his dad is now comes to our church and kind of plugs his in, dad does? yeah, and wants to figure it out. Will they watch and these his, interviews? Um, yeah, will yeah, they? They oh, will. Good. And his dad was actually really excited to hear that Garrett was coming out here, really, and to have this interview. <laughs> yeah, and um, he's he's so been amazing. in the church and he's been fifty plus years in Mormonism. Yeah, and so I think sometimes it takes a little bit longer to really break those walls down oh, yeah. and so he's in that process and Garrett and I can see the process and we can see the light and we can see and he's remarried and I had the most amazing opportunity to sit with his new wife and she gave her life to the Lord oh, my goodness. and I just so who's see next? <laughs> I, exactly that's what we see we go okay who's next Lord like we're with you and we're here and our our love for our family like we're gonna hit them all like it, God is coming. And can you believe when you get together how you talk about Jesus and the Bible or things you're learning and stuff? I mean, it's yeah. just so, so different. I could go months without talking about you know, as a Mormon, without without talking, without talking about, about it. Jesus yeah. or the Bible or anything like that. Yeah. The church. We always talk about the church and callings and. Stuff yes, like they that. talk about but, the church a know, lot. Who's going on a mission? Who's getting yes. married? In the, which temple are you getting married in? And blah blah mm -hmm. blah. But not about Jesus, not, not about, about the, the Lord. Bible. I know, I know. And um, I think that's why the, my husband's in the family he is, to insert Jesus wherever he can. And just see God's hand in all of this, yep, can't you? Yeah, I can. And even getting you two together and, and to be together on this uh, journey is mm -hmm. just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We're out of time. Oh, already. my goodness. <laughs> it does go quickly sometimes, yeah. doesn't it? Well, you're just as sweet as you can be, and I can see what you and Garrett <laughs> just are a wonderful couple. And three children. How about your oldest? Um, my oldest is nine, Isaac. Okay. Yeah, and then no, I have James and, and Ruby, five and three. Oh, mm -hmm. how sweet. And raising them. They're part of your Christian ministry, too, I guess. The Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Michelle. You're Thank just you. a sweetheart. Thanks. And we'll see you next time on the Ex Mormon Files.